So you've just unboxed your brand new Philips all-in-one multi-cooker and you're raring to go for good reason too, because it's a fabulous pressure cooker and slow cooker with the ability to do so much more. It can also keep food warm, slow cook, saute and sear, thicken a sauce, cook a hot pot, reheat food, make a stew, cook a jam, make your own yogurt, and bake things like cakes and puddings. So what on earth are you going to cook first? A tough decision, I know. But before we jump into cooking deliciousness, let's walk through a couple of the basics first. So we've had a quick look at the multi-functions before. Now let me walk you through these pressure cook settings. To access these, simply press pressure cook and you'll see various functions appear on the screen, as well as the automatic default time and pressure setting for each. So we have soup, risotto, rice, steam, chicken and duck, beef and lamb, and beans and tendons. Most of these functions can be manually adjusted. To do this, to select a different time, press the cooking time button. Then simply adjust it up or down. To modify the pressure, simply press the temperature pressure button. Then just press start. And now the lid. This is the pressure regulator and this is the floating pin. These are a couple of really important safety features of this multi-cooker. During cooking, it's really important to steer clear of these as both can release hot steam at various times. So you can see here that there are three positions that the regulator can be set depending on the cooking you are doing. Bake. Now this is for when you are using the bake function and you'll also see the little red center is pushed up. Then there's the seal button. This is for when using a pressure cooking setting, the little red center will be down. And this is vent. This is for when you need to release the pressure or when you're cooking using the slow cook, stew or yogurt function. The little red center will be pushed back up again. And now the lid. Now this is the inner lid and this here, the ceiling ring. Pressure regulator, floating pin, inner lid and ceiling ring can be removed and cleaned with water. For those really stubborn stains, we recommend that you use a mixture of bicarb soda and water and just make it into a thick paste. So inside is the removable non-stick inner pot made of five layers of pro ceramic coating. This means we can cook with oil or without for healthier cooking. It also ensures that cleanup is a breeze and it's also now even more resistant to scratches. Now, if you're new to pressure cooking, here are five handy cooking tips. So where appropriate, use ingredients that are at room temperature and cut them into small pieces. They'll require less heating up and it'll also reduce the time it takes for the food in the pot to come to pressure. One and a half cups of liquid is a good minimum requirement when pressure cooking, be it diced tomato, water or stock. Only fill the bowl to about two thirds or three fifths full as the empty space is needed to allow the pressure to build. So dairy can curdle. It's best to use full cream, be it yogurt, milk, coconut cream, or just simply mix a lower fat variety with a little corn flour before adding it in. Liquid won't evaporate when pressure cooking and that includes alcohol too. So if you are using alcohol, simmer it first using a saute sear mode. Now back to that decision of what to cook first. It is a tough one, but I know whatever you will cook, it'll certainly be delicious. And I know that you'll love the ease of that set and forget style of cooking, as well as the versatility that this appliance can give you.